In the middle of the 1860 presidential election, there is this most extraordinary story. Abraham Lincoln, presidential candidate, Republican nominee, writes a letter on October 19, 1860 to a little girl in upstate New York. He addresses the letter to my dear little miss. Her name was Grace Bedell. He says, your very agreeable letter of the 15th is received. And he's referring to a letter that he had received from Grace Bedell that was addressed to Honorable A.B. Lincoln. And she writes, Dear Sir, I am a little girl of only 11 years old, but want you should be President of the United States very much. So I hope you won't think me very bold to write such a great man as you are. She tells him later in the letter, I have got four brothers and part of them will vote for you anyway if you let your whiskers grow. I will try and get the rest of them to vote for you. You would look a great deal better, she writes, for your face is so thin. All the ladies like whiskers and they would tease their husbands to vote for you and then you would be president. I must not write any more. Answer this letter right off. Goodbye, Grace Bedell. So Lincoln responds to this letter within you know, days after receiving it. She wrote the letter on the 15th, he responded on the 19th of October. I regret the necessity, he writes, of saying I have no daughters. I have three sons, one 17, one nine, and one seven years of age. Now, of course, Lincoln had had four sons. One of them, Eddie, had died as an infant at the beginning of the 1850s. He's referring to the three surviving sons, Robert, his eldest, who was 17, uh, Willie, who was nine, and Thomas or Tad, who was the youngest at seven. And Lincoln writes, they with their mother constitute my whole family. Mary Todd Lincoln was their mother and his wife. They were living in Springfield and he is uh, clearly somebody who enjoys the opportunity to correspond with a, a young girl. As to the whiskers, Lincoln writes, having never worn any, do you not think people would call it a piece of silly affectation if I were to begin it now? Uh, whiskers were fashionable back then, uh, in the middle of the 19th century. Men were beginning to grow beards on a frequent basis. Uh, this is something that the little girl alludes to, and this is something that Lincoln responds to by calling it a piece of affectation. Your very sincere, sincere well-wisher, he writes, A. Lincoln. Now, this is a minor thing. Uh, and yet it reflects a great deal, more than people might realize. Uh, the fact that a little girl in upstate New York knew what a presidential candidate looked like was a startlingly new thing. Uh, campaign illustrations of the candidates had emerged during the 1840s, but most Americans did not know what presidential candidates looked like until the age of Abraham Lincoln. He is what you might call the first photography president. Now the Broadside, the poster that she was looking at did not have photographs, but it had prints that were made from photographs of Lincoln. Lincoln was the most photographed politician of his era. We have over 120 images of him. And he was also one who took his image seriously. This is a man who sat for portrait photography at a time when it took a long time to have your photograph taken. He sat for sculptors and painters. He had painters in the White House later when he became president. This is a man who understood the political value of an image. And Grace Bedell reflects the impact of that, that it had. This is a girl who feels close enough to a presidential candidate to write him and talk about his face and his family. And you know what makes the story even richer is that uh, after this exchange, the, the, the pair met each other. Abraham Lincoln, as president-elect, uh, decided that he was going to grow a beard after all, even though he called it a piece of silly affectation. The new beard became a kind of small sensation, and when the president-elect was traveling from Springfield to Washington in early 1861, his train passed near the town where Grace Bedell and her family were living. And so Republican Party organizers, sensing the human interest story that was in front of them, they arranged to have her brought to the train station where Lincoln gave a little speech. They hauled her up on the back of the train and the president-elect of the United States showed her his new whiskers and said, I grew these whiskers for you, little Grace, and gave her a kiss on the cheek. It was a, you know, a cute story and people appreciated it. Uh, it's been celebrated ever since. Grace Bedell actually lived until 1936. She later married a Union Army veteran and they moved out to Kansas. But there's a footnote to the story that's kind of revealing uh, for people who care about historical documents. Uh, and that was just a few years ago. Uh, a researcher uh, at the National Archives discovered another letter from Grace Bedell to Abraham Lincoln, written during the Civil War, 
She says, I've now grown to the size of a woman. She was 14 in 1864. And she tells the President of the United States that the war has been hard on her family and she needs a job. And she asks him for a job uh, in the Treasury Department. In that era, before they had photocopiers, young girls used to write out documents or copies of documents in longhand in the basement of the Treasury Building. Treasury girls, they were called. And that's what Grace wanted to be. Now, the story gets even richer, although the rest of it is kind of lost in oral tradition. The Bedell family and the neighbors of Grace Bedell in upstate New York, they were convinced that Abraham Lincoln uh, had offered at some point to adopt Grace Bedell as his daughter. He says, I regret the necessity of saying I have no daughters in his letter. And so the oral tradition was always that he wanted one and that he offered to adopt her because they had a kind of bond. Historians always dismiss that. Nobody ever believed that oral tradition. But now that we've discovered a new document that puts uh, a rationale behind an offer, perhaps not for adoption, but for the President of the United States, after he received a letter like that from the young girl in 1864, to write her father and offer to let her live with the first family in the White House while she worked at the Treasury Department. We don't have that letter. We don't even know for sure that Abraham Lincoln read the second letter from Grace Bedell. Um, but it makes sense in light of the tradition. And I think it's interesting to speculate. It would also make sense that her father would be embarrassed by this and that he would never share it with her. She never knew about it and she never went to Washington. She probably thought the President of the United States had forgotten about her. We don't know what happened, but we do know that when you find new documents, it creates new opportunities to interpret. And that's why close reading of documents is really important. And that's why this story you know, remains kind of endlessly fascinating, even though it seems to be on the surface just the story about a candidate and a little girl.